the most difficult thing <coughs> in a way I said this is, is choosing your topic defining a relevant question and a relevant question may be something that is in practical terms somewhat pressing, high on the political agenda, whatever the political agenda is, it's not about necessarily about political things in, in the strict sense, but in terms of, of how we live together. Um, <coughs> we meaning here as a, as a group of, of international students, uh, which is part of Europe, be it uh, situations in uh, member states, being, uh, be it about um, non-European countries and the relationship between EU and, and, uh, and, and non-Europe, uh, or be it uh, as a matter of, of Europe. Uh, how, how do we get, get on in, uh, in Europe? Which is, of course, a thing that may be immediately political in the understanding of party politics or institutions deciding on this and that. Or it may be as well a matter of, uh, for instance, our identity. Do we feel as Europeans or do we feel as uh, citizens of, of the nation state, uh, what, whatever. It may be a, a matter of culture. Culture is not usually not considered um, to, to be a political thing as such, but it is. Uh, if you look at, at language, um, I briefly uh, mentioned this, uh, the, the relevance of language is a highly political thing. Uh, especially if you don't use your language or if you are not allowed to use your language. And saying not allowed to your, uh, use your language, I don't mean uh, as it had been the case in Ireland, uh, where English, uh, using Irish had been forbidden uh, by the Brits. Uh, you see it there and you see the other way uh, Austrian-Hungarian Empire, where the Habsburg, and in particular uh, it, it was the Queen then, uh, had been allowing, had been granting the right, yes, you can speak Hungarians, it's fine. Um, it was not as such political uh, as we uh, usually understand it, but it was usually important. Uh, in terms of the Hungarians did, did not develop a certain kind of resistance. They integrated uh, into this uh, uh, empire. Now, what is the question? How, how can we develop it? It can be something and it should be something as well that is relevant for you. Relevant in terms of this is something that interests you but it is as well something that is manageable for you. Meaning you have the skills in terms of language. I wouldn't write anything substantial about Spain because my Spanish is, is extremely limited. Meaning basically it's non-existent. I can understand a little bit from French, Latin and, and Italian. But this is not sufficient to, to work in Spanish, to work with Spanish documents. Um, are the documents available? You can get a huge amount of documents from, from the Vatican after 60 years. After 60 years, uh, well, the, the, the library is open and opens then subsequently after 60 years to new documents. So don't do ex uh, uh, in-depth analysis of on, on, on uh, Papa Benedetto or, or Papa Francesco. The, the, the documents are not there. You can do other research linked to them, 
but not on their where, when you where you depend on their documents. Uh, sometimes to get access to your library, it's open, but you don't get access for different reasons. So it should be something you you sh you have to think about this uh, as well. What is interesting from an intellectual perspective, from the perspective of um, the, the topical uh, topicality of, of relevance uh, and in terms of manageability. But another thing, mm -hmm. and this is uh, something I want to talk about today, is the methodology. Methodology is methodology. It is not methods. I frequently see chapters in books, in essays, in theses, uh, heading methodology. And then comes statistics, document analysis, and <coughs> whatsoever. This is not methodology. Methodology is not this toolbox we use, but the methodology is thinking about which tools do we actually need. Thinking about the difference between a screw and a nail that we know after that, yes, for a nail, we need a different instrument than for a screw to drive it into the wall. Seems to be very simple. When simple things, you know what you have to do, but it is getting more difficult in certain instances, where we actually, in some cases, use a questionnaire asking people about things they cannot know, they cannot answer. It is not appropriate to use a questionnaire uh, to make an in-depth historical analysis. There you need documents. And historical analysis, I mean now going further back uh, than, than the uh, people who, who, whom you can interview who, who lived this history. But even then, you may ask, is it really valuable to think about, um, to, to ask people about history they, they live through. I sometimes think nowadays in completely different ways, and this would re be reflected in the answers I gave in an interview, about th things that happened in, in the 60s. I had been alive there, I had been even participating in societal life, but today I wouldn't say I changed my mind. I have different insights. So in this way, methodology is about the knowledge and the logic of the knowledge we have, we can have, and it is about the being. Who, who has knowledge about what? What kind of knowledge is it? Epistemology and ontology. This is something very basic. Who knows what? What can we actually know? We can know certain things about the, the past, but there are things we cannot know. And there are certain things we cannot know, especially about the future. We cannot simply draw a line from today and say, OK, this will develop in this and that way. Things change. There are different influences, and history develops in this strange thing that it permanently reconstitutes the conditions under which it develops. We build universities, <laughs> and with this, with, you know, with this building of universities, we have, of course, a different way of uh, learning. And learning changes because we have universities that are now mass universities. It's not this small amount of Latin-speaking monks who had been highly educated as priests and doing their work. 
this was a different knowledge as well, changing according to this. So find your question, think about the kind of knowledge, think about the kind of people you are dealing with in terms of, of uh, individuals, but as well in terms of, of, of is it the modern or the, the ancient person you are looking at. Uh, and try to define in this respect your topic. Try to define it as well, especially in the context of two broad questions. The one is that we are talking always about history. European Union is something in history. It didn't exist forever. I'm just calculating how old am I and how old is the Europe, what, what we call today European Union. Um, <coughs> I lived throughout the entire history of this European Union. I had been involved in many political aspects there. Um, and now talking about political developments of the EU, or what we call today EU. If I look at the discussions today and those in the 70s, let's say, the style of discussion is completely different. So this is a very short, historically, a very short period. 70s, now we have 2020, it's about 50 years, it's nothing. And then you go back even further and, and say what we discussed in 2000 and what we discussed in 2020. The composition is a different one. Um, the questions are completely different. Now let's go back to 69 because this was a concrete event. There we discussed on how to get the Union closer together to develop a European consciousness. Today we have the question, how can we keep these countries within the Union? Not about a European consciousness. Actually, in a way, more the other way around of devolution, of give things back to the member states uh, that they don't run away because as the Britain uh, as, as Britain wants they, they want to leave the Union they think it is a super state so questions develop and then of course we talked indirectly about it Europe is or claims to have some very long long term history it's this ancient, the reference to ancient Europe, ancient Greek, uh, in ancient Greek uh, traditions, philosophy, ways of thinking. And sometimes you think, oh yes, of course, we are all Greek. This is what we said a couple of years ago when, when uh, they oppressed the, the country today. But no, it's, it's all about, yes, we, we all stand in this tradition. Are we? I'll give you some homework where you may think about it. Meaning there is this link, at the same time we have the Renaissance, which means there was something breaking away. Did Europe, did European thinking did not exist during this time, that we had to revive the ancient ideas? That's the, the quote. But what we have is at least this reference to history in uh, what Fernand Brodel uh, talked about in, on, on three planes. 
we have this long-term history of, <coughs> yes, we are Europeans. We are all ancient Greek uh, thinkers, even if we don't know it, even if we are not aware of it. A little bit Roman as well, but uh, they treated the slaves so bad, so we leave them out. Um, and, and then we have this, this move to the Renaissance later, and this is history, long durée, long-term history. And then we have had something that I can include myself, uh, we didn't go, go through personally. We know in different, to different, in, in different ways uh, what it meant, but we didn't live in the 1929 uh, to 30s uh, when there was this, this crisis where many people say the crisis today is very similar to the end of the Weimarian Republic in Germany uh, that prepared then the World War. It was not a, a German crisis, but it was hugely relevant there because it was the forerunner of, of the, the Second World War that uh, started from, from Germany. Now, the crisis was a United States one, of course, the original one, but this was Wall Street, this was far away, and there was a wall uh, kind of dividing <coughs> the, the, the world. Uh, this is part of it. Of course, we have always this global history, but at the same time, we narrow it down to something uh, that is manageable, that we can overlook. Uh, China at that time and age didn't exist in a way. It was so far away. It existed. If you go to, the, to, to Italy, to the Palazzi uh, of the uh, Medici, you will see that it existed, that there is a huge stock of, of uh, exhibits of, of stuff they uh, have had from China. Marco Polo. It existed, but it was not relevant on the political agenda. Today it is. We did not go through the Second World War. Um, and in a way, we all would be affected there, meaning the countries from where we come. They had been affected. The European country here in Poland, Poland had been the first, had been occupied and Japan had been the last who had been, that had been destroyed by the Americans um, by, by throwing two uh, uh, nuclear bombs, nu nuclear weapons on it. So it matters still today. We are kind of aware of it even if we did not went through it. And then there is of course this short-term history. Yesterday in Hesse there had been elections. Um, I don't know much about it, but I, I read today the headlines, this will change the German federal government, meaning, in short, Merkel has to go, this finish. I don't know, maybe, but this is short-term history. This is what affects us day to day. And of course, if Merkel or the German central government changes, this matters for all of us in our countries. We don't know how, but it makes a change. We have to make, or you have to make, when, whenever looking at your question, as well, if you want a decision, where am I? Am I arguing on this, on this, or on this plane? Long durée or events? What is relevant? And then I come actually to the second general point of relevance. Whenever you look at your question, it's a question, it's seemingly quite easy to find something where, where you say, yes, that's an, an interesting question. 
elections You find it, the quote on, on the, in, in the Dropbox. In a way, it is the, if, if you want the, the paradox that is called ascending for, from uh, the abstract to the concrete. And paradox, I say, if you read this uh, uh, quote, it starts actually with something where we, first and foremost, would say, yes, this is concrete. It starts with the population. It starts, a question to you, with what is a cat? And then you say, but, yeah, what, but what is a cat? I know, of course I know what a cat it is. It's this animal with four legs and a tail and a head relatively small is that all a cat has a fur a cat has claws what is essential for a cat a cat may have three legs after an accident sadly so what is essential the cat is something very abstract, because a cat can be, there are many different cats, different kinds of cats. Some people say, terminology, a lion is a cat, a tiger is a cat. So, yes, but it's pretty large if you compare it with your little cat you may have at home. So what, what is essential for a cat? What is essential, what is the core of the concrete if you look at the population? It is not this huge crowd that we see, although this is what we see as concrete. Yes, there are people, there are 100 people, there are 1 million people gathering, and this is the population. There is a statistics on the population in each of the countries. It's nine million, about nine million Hungarians. Um, I, I don't know what, whatever uh, in the different countries. This is concrete, yes. They all have a passport. Ah, they have a passport. So not everybody who lives in the country and does not have a passport from this country is part of this population. The essential, the most important sentence is this. The concrete is concrete because it is the concentration of many determinations, hence unity of the di diverse. This is the point where we have to say it's the concentration and what makes it concrete is actually that it is something essential. This really defines this one thing of population or of a cat. And of course then it's going from this abstract to the concrete and we say we are talking, then we come back to the historical part, for instance, and this depends then on your question. <coughs> on the population of a certain age, on the population of a certain class, uh, population in terms of gender, in terms of national citizens or people living in certain areas. All this is important. And all this is important in terms of our decision we have to take, where we have to, to define a topic out of these vast abstract things, European integration. Oh, good God. It can be everything, including disintegration. So what is relevant for your question? As I said, something that is 
on the political agenda, in the widest sense political, what is of interest in terms of intellectual disputes and something that you can manage in terms of language, in terms of access to, to documents, in terms of previous knowledge, and so on. And then we have, of course, this previous knowledge. And this previous knowledge is not only something that we learned on this subject. We all know, I assume, that the EU was not always the EU, but at some stage it was the European community, uh, European economic community. There was a change. This is something we know. We know uh, that it had been not always this amount of uh, countries and will not be always this amount of countries. This changes. But there is something else we know or that we can call previous knowledge. And this is methodology. This is about what do we value in our thinking and with our thinking. Where we say, whenever we think about something, we have certain anchors, we have certain uh, strong points where we say this is the point of departure for our thinking. Of our thinking. Meaning not everybody has to think the same way. Meaning you have certain national cultural differences there. And there would be especially four, I mentioned them, four points of references, of, of reference, where we can say this is important guiding our thinking. The first is methodological individualism. And there we come back actually to this European tradition of the appreciation of the individual. I remember sitting together with a friend, with a colleague of mine, uh, saying that the, the really most important thing for us as lawyers, this was a, a lawyer, <coughs> legal expert. The most important thing is actually Monsieur, and this was not the separation of uh, the, the division of, of powers, separation of powers, but the most important thing is with Monsieur we have the individual. We have an actor. We have this idea of um, the one individual is decisive. Now, of course, you can say no. Who, who believes in this? We are all thinking about other people and then that. Now, the dear economists, Mr. Watkins being one, the ultimate constituents of the social world are individual people who act more or less appropriately in the light of their dispositions and their understanding of their situation. Every complex social situation or event is the result of individuals, their dispositions, situations, beliefs, and physical resources and environment. What can we say against it? Milton Friedman condensed this and talked about a collection, societies, economies, being a collection of Robins and Crusoes, as it were. We are all sitting on our little island, thinking about ourselves, acting to our own benevolence, and that's it. 
And then you have this dispute actually, yes, this is exactly what we Europeans do. Europeans, not Europeans. This is the reference. This is actually something a friend of mine recently said as well when we had been out for dinner. And she, sh she said, Th this is, you, you are all so individualistic. You, you, you don't think about meaning. The meaning is just your individual success short term. We, she is Chinese, we have a different point of reference. I don't know if you have been in China, I don't know actually the situation in other uh, Asian countries, but in China we have a beautiful thing of a, somebody said always, this is our we meal. We are sitting together, we have our meal, that's what we have in Italy as well, we enjoy family meals and we go out and it's great. But in Italy we still get, usually, leaving the starter aside, we get our own dish. In China, I remember many cases, we have been sitting around a, a, round, a large round table, getting the different dishes on a sub-table that had been turned around. A certain sequence to it, <coughs> a certain way, but then you wait that something comes to you. You take your part, this thing goes on. Culture is politics. This is this we are having our meal together. Now, of course, with this large table, it makes much sense. I'm, I'm vegetarian, so I was going out with friends, and they had not been vegetarians, and, and they said, no, no, we order this for you, this is vegetarian. Then they brought this, we had been only f three or four people, they brought this, put it onto the table, and my friend took it and began to eat. Of course, he did not eat the entire thing, but it, it was ordered for me, but it was in the middle of the table. And everybody could, of course, take from it. I went out, uh, friends visited me in, in, uh, in Rome, Chinese. Um, they ordered a dish and they ordered then four plates to put the dish into the middle of the table and say, no, we, we share. And then there was this Finnish guy in China at some stage uh, where we had been sitting around a, a large table and he wanted this thing at the other end and he was just turning the table around. People had been looking, <laughs> surprised, uh, and didn't say anything because, okay, except he doesn't know. But this is a huge difference in terms of, and then you come to this question of, of, of relevance, of, of the concentration. It is not just about a certain behavior, but there is so much involved, even questions of property, of respect, of what defines us as group, that we can all sit together or that we actually share and wh what do we share? What is relevant, but it is, at least in social science, in the West, whatever this West is, methodological individualism. The second point is methodological nationalism. From wherever you come, I guess nation at least plays a relatively important role for you. Relatively means it can be a very strong role, you feel as Spanish whatsoever, you may feel as well in terms of your region from wherever you come, 
Or you may say, okay, I am French, but at the same time, I'm very much European. Mentioning French, uh, uh, yeah, France, it was actually funny that I think they stopped at this stage, but for a long, long time after the introduction of the euro, you still found uh, the price in French form. It was funny. It, it always reminded you, but you are French. Methodological in, uh, uh, nationalism uh, is this thing of of this is the focus of our thinking in terms of institutions. How can we link with our system, parliamentary de democracy, federalism, whatsoever, how can we link to the others? But important is what we are. And this is one of the major problems of the European Union to integrate. And this is actually something where they try to solve, in inverted commas, this problem by thinking about Europe as a state. Then we don't have the problem anymore. If you have um, Europe as a new nation state, then we have another reference. But we still have the same in terms of methodology. And then, of course, what matters, what else matters, it is the situation now, presentism, methodological presentism. What happens tomorrow is not really of importance. What is important is what is happening now. And of course, if we don't solve the problems today, we are in a mess. The question, always talking about methodological individualism, nationalism, presentism, is not that we don't think about the future, but we think about the future in terms of our presence, in terms of what is it, what we do, and how we cope with the situation today. I dare to say, Whenever we talk about we have to live or we have to, to, to conserve the, the world for our children and grandchildren, I dare to say we only do this because we mention if we don't do it, we have problems today. This is the main thing. Even if it's only that our children tell us, what are you doing there? You shouldn't do it. You are destroying my future. This is what we are worried about, that we are, that our children are complaining about our behavior, not that we really worry about the future. Of course, it is uh, very much to, to one point, and there are different uh, examples, different arguments, but in general, this is the trend. And the other methodological point is solutionism, call it pragmatism or whatsoever. We need a solution now. We have to solve a problem. This is the important point. And this connection between now and solution is frequently misguiding us. That a solution is, in many cases, the establishment of a new problem. We always refer to the giants of science, um, the, the great minds, uh, Albert Einstein, saying, um, we cannot, this is exactly this, we cannot solve our problems with the answers we gave and that that had been leading us into this problem. We have to look for something else, and this means we have to look for something that is not providing an immediate solution. Employment, employment policy solves many problems 
of Europe today. But if this is really a solution, or a uh, uh, um, victory, this is another question. It is export, for instance. Yes, export is something where we find a solution for a current crisis, but this is not the question. And this is always the point. We have to look for the question. So, figure it out, what is essential, figuring out in which historical perspective is it essential, and then figuring it out in terms of the goal. And there is this vague idea of doing something good. At least today, this was then at least overcome by the medievals or after the medievals with the Renaissance, we, we do not explicitly <coughs> count on violence and on oppression. That we do it, in fact, is a different story. But at least, even if we do so, we claim that it is good for the other. <coughs> so there is this vague idea of uh, welfare. In economics, he hadn't been economist, but in, econom uh, in economics we talk about the Pareto optimum, meaning whatever we do in economics should have, and this is something in general, should be beneficial for everything. Even if it is not beneficial to the same extent at least it should not harm anybody. Meaning any economic, political, social action <coughs> should be shaped in such a way that afterwards nobody is worse off. One, two, many are better off but at least there is no harm done to anybody. And this is, of course, a problem in a way. How can we make it compatible with a situation that everybody is acting for him or herself? The one thing is having a regulator, having a state, state-like instance. I want a computer, a laptop, I take it. You actually want a tablet, you take it, but I want to keep, it, uh, keep, keep this as well, and you want, of course, keep your uh, uh, laptop. So what are we doing? We are fighting over it. And then there is this instance saying, no, stop. Hang on, this is your property, <coughs> this is your property, you have to respect this. No fight allowed. So this is the point where we have regulators uh, in one way or another securing this goal, overall goal of, of welfare. In philosophical terms, you have it, of course, uh, with the imperative um, in the popular version, don't act in a way that you don't want others to act. So always do something that you respect as well if somebody else does it. This means, coming back to the question of social, individual and this stuff, um, Friedman, speaking of Robinsons, what happened to Robinson when he was stuck on his little island? Shipwrecked, he was sitting there just on his own and Milton Friedman says, yes, that's the, the typical example of the ultimate 
uh, individual. If we look at Robinson, was he really this <coughs> individual? Wasn't he very much a social being in terms of the tools he brought from this wrecked ship? He was going back to the ship and saving different things, including, <coughs> gun, <coughs> including gunpowder. This was a social act, meaning he saved from his, his predecessors, from his ancestors, uh, what they had been providing. He was just on his own, and nevertheless, he was a social being. He was his, on his own, he domestic animals, he, he domesticated animals, not really a matter of um, socializing with animals. He was alone until Friday came. And then there was another human. And then you would say, okay, now he is socializing. If you read the story, if you remember the story, if you read it, it's, it's uh, this, this process of uh, really developing social existence, where you think, yes, he has his language, Robinson has his language, now he teaches him. He teaches <coughs> Friday. You are Friday. Friday has, in a way, a certain symbolic meaning. Of course, it was simply learning or teaching this language, but it was something else. There is Friday, there is Saturday, and there is Sunday. And what happened there was actually, he, this was one of the first things he started, he had a calendar. He had this calendar of the week, counting the days, but as well separating the week into working days and weekend. He was bringing with him this Christian tradition. This is all something that made him social, even being alone. And this is something important in terms as well of thinking about not only I will be punished if I take this object from somebody else, but as well I stand in this tradition of being member of a society. I should not act in a way others uh, where, where I do not want uh, that, that I uh, want others to do. Uh, not, not to do. I, I want to have this equality. There is a certain standard. Of course, it's hugely contested. It is always again and again breached. But it is as well something where we find, we find different ways of regulation. And then we come actually to this action. You have the actor, the individual, the nation state wanting something now wanting a solution now. We have the goal of some kind of welfare. And then we have, in terms of the action, of course, this major thing in the West, the property. That's why I said it's so important where we see in property. It is as well where and how we eat. But it is something where property plays a role in what is called and disputed uh, permanently the tragedy of the commons. I don't know if you came across it. The commons is the medieval uh, later form as well uh, of, of property. It's not private property. It is the property of the people who are living in this certain area. Especially concerning land used for grazing, where everybody could send the sheep 
actually, all the cattle, whatever you have, on this commons for grazing. And now there comes this conflict where some people say this is absolutely stupid idea. If you have the commons, everybody is allowed to send, send the, 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 the animals there. Everybody will do it in a way that he or she gets the most out of it. I don't take care, I don't mind <coughs> how much you want. I will try to be the first in the morning, have my 500 sheep there, and then you can do whatever you want. There's no space left. It's not only about the 500 sheep, but it, I, I will, it, it will um, go on with a process of overgrazing, meaning I use more than others can. And at the end of the day, this is the decisive thing, at the end of the day there is no grass left for nobody. Because of course, if I use quite a lot, you will always try to get the last little bit of grass there. But then there is this other moment, or the argument against it, this will not happen because people have insight and they will look after the other. They know about it is our property and we will look after this. And there is a second moment that then of course you see somebody is misusing the situation, overgrazing, and then you say, sorry, don't. We don't like this. And at some stage, you will say, don't. You have two sheep per day for eight hours, and that's it. <coughs> Meaning, you come from a general agreement. The effort, the attempt to find a, 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 a communal uh, regulation, which means no regulation in the strict, in the formal sense, you'll come to a uh, formal regulation because somebody doesn't accept this. It's a power game. But this is something that happens where you have these methodological imperatives, you have this imperative on some kind of welfare, and then you have something else where you can say it is about finding a way to reaching it. <coughs> it may be a communal, mutual understanding and negotia permanent negotiation. It is always permanent negotiation. Or it may be something where you have a permanent or uh, for, for, for some time, a strong regulation in place that once, not forever, but for long period, uh, defines the rights. Property rights, decision rights, and whatsoever. See planes of history, where are you looking at? At the short term or at the uh, long durée, at the very long perspective. There is always the problem, as well defining the question, whatever I do and think, is it relevant? In political science, you may uh, have heard about it, it's the, uh, captured by the term path dependency. If I set up a system I cannot immediately change it afterwards. It takes at least this medium term, uh, medium, medium historical perspective where I change as well attitudes and behavior. It's something that happens actually now. <coughs> in different countries, in particular in Turkey, Hungary and Poland, 
where you have a, an attempt, and in many cases successful attempt, that the current governments, especially in, in, in Turkey it's very visible, um, in, in Hungary as well, uh, you, you change the system towards a presidential system. <coughs> If you manage this, the one thing is, of course, you put it into place. There's a new regulation, regulative system. But this means the entire decision-making process changes. And if this happens, if this is successfully established, after 10, 15 years latest, you cannot simply go back. You cannot change the United States from a presidential system to whatsoever else. You can do it under two conditions. You have a long time, you have a long way, and you are ready to go it, or violence. So this is the important part um, <coughs> to think as well, whatever we propose, whatever we find, is it something actually people today are responsible for it? To which extent or to which extent can, do, do they simply have to follow the path on which they are? Of course, there are strong arguments that you can do whatever you want to do. Do it now. Don't hesitate. There are strong reasons to say this is simply opportunism. You pretend or you suggest, no, no, this is, we always did it this way, so we have, have to do it. We have to continue. But, and but means there is a struggle. There is a hegemonic system, a counter-hegemony, and, and it's a permanent struggle. This is what you find in um, in Europe today. Where I was reading something, I forgot it was so of, of such a little importance. I read something the other day, it was uh, before anybody was thinking about the EU um, <coughs> or Europe or whatsoever, uh, I think it was about the Renaissance or some s around that time, where the United States, uh, the, the the UK did not go. Ah, right. It was the introduction of streetlights in in the world. Um, <coughs> streetlights today, we take them for granted, but, but it hadn't been always the case. And then they, they switched from the, the old system of people running around and, and there was a, after, I don't know, when, when it was dark, you had not been allowed to, to walk on the streets. <coughs> then they introduced the street lights, first with gas to be, then with, with electricity. The UK said no. We don't want it. All Europe had it. The UK said no. The UK always resisted uh, or often resisted the introduction of European legislation. They didn't accept the social charter and, and, and. and now they leave. So long-term history, path dependency. We always did it in our own terms. We cannot simply go another way. And what is the, the role of individuals? How can they decide? Um, and, and sometimes you see it really uh, with these little anecdotes, uh, the, the meaning of it. I was, meet, uh, was on a meeting in Brussels. There had been two people from the UK, a young and an old one. Um, it was just one week after they opened the tunnel. So you could go by train to Brussels, to Paris. Hey, how are you? We knew each other. H how did you get here? 
the one no, no, I, I came with, I don't know, British Airways or whatsoever. Um, and the other, I, I took the train. What? You took the train? This was just something, a deal with the devil. You can't take the train. And there was a long resistance to, to build this tunnel from the British side. You can't open. We, we are an island. A tunnel means we are not an island anymore, not completely. Uh, now have a guess who was the one who took the train, the younger or the older? It was the older. Uh, interestingly enough, but, but it shows the strength of this path dependency of thinking. We always did it this way. I can't go and join the devil to use this tunnel. As I said, I want you to look at home. You have it here on the internet. At this file, Judgments on History and Historians, uh, Jakob Burkhardt from Switzerland had been agreeably, I guess, uh, the most important thinker about history and, and Renaissance. Talking about the meaning and qualifying, actually, as well, our understanding of this role of the individual. Uh, I found it very interesting in terms of where are we actually standing with our uh, continuity and how many breaks had been there uh, in connection with the European development. Have a look at it. Uh, we can then discuss it next time. Are there so far questions to what I said, methodology? It is really important that you do, that you have it in mind, and that you can justify, as well, when you are uh, uh, writing on, on your thesis, on, on your essay, that you can justify. This is where I am thinking. I am not thinking about the long-term history. I'm not thinking about today, but this is a general trend. And this is, in many cases, a very difficult question. I, uh, we, we discussed this in terms of what is the meaning of decisions that had been taken for us by our parents, by our grandparents. <coughs> do we have, why do we have to stick to them? And you can turn it in different ways. Why do we have to stick to the nation states if we have now Europe? Why do we have to go and accept Europe only because our parents and possibly grandparents did it? So try to figure it out and try to be clear there. <coughs> question is the most important when it comes to writing. In terms of substance, if you want. <coughs> <coughs> 